it's been like four months. I had this great plan of doing like a summer wrap up and except all my books are at school and I never got them back to my apartment. And then I thought, well, I could do a video at school, but I thought that might be weird. I just, so I just didn't. Um, so I'm taking advantage of the fact that today was picture day at school and I actually like did stuff with myself. So that's why we're doing this video. Uh, so I have lots of updates, but I thought I would just do some different book reviews as different videos and things like that. So this one is for Lord of the Flies. So this version was actually actually not the one I used. That one is being borrowed by a student. But this is it from like 1962 version that I bought, and I've looked through it because there are notes. It was obviously an assignment, and the student made a lot of notes. And that's kind of cool. And there's also some neat articles and interviews with William Golding in the back. So, Lord of the Flies. Should I say spoilers? Like, if you don't know what happens, uh, a bunch of boys are who have been evacuated from Britain uh, for the safety of, I don't actually know where they're going, but there's a war going on. It feels very uh, World War One, World War Two ish They often carted out a lot of kids from England. I always think of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and bed knobs and broomsticks when I think of those kind of things. And so they're in a they're in a plane and the plane gets hit or whatever, it get, crashes and so it pretty much starts with the kids on the island, there are no adults. Uh, the boys age range is about like super small but you don't talk to them a whole lot, all the way up to 12. And they are really excited about not having adult supervision and they try to create rules for themselves and keep a fire burning so they can be rescued, but also build shelters, but also hunt. And it starts out okay, but things sort of spiral down and their naturally inherent aggressive natures get the better of them and it turns out really, really, really bad. It's basically Peter Pan more realistically, is how I always think of it. So anyway, I have never read it prior to this first reading. I assigned it and then decided to read it this summer. Uh, I had always heard things about it, I'd always wanted to read it, so, and I haven't been able to write a book review or talk about it because it was so impactful. This book is incredibly harrowing. It is terrifying, and it's not terrifying in the sense that, you know, it, it's not like a Stephen King novel or a scary movie or anyone else who writes scary books, I don't know, because I don't read scary books because I'm a wimp. This is scary to me because I can see it happening. I can see a bunch of kids uh, trying to do what's right, but because they have so much freedom and because we're inherently, you know, dark people, I can see it turning out exactly as it does, and it's so, so scary. It's such a good book. It's not extremely long. The language is mostly easy. It's British, so there's a couple of, like, terms and slang and thing like that and things like that. But it is, you know, I mean, the the level of content and what happens, there's a fair amount of violence in it, uh, would make it older probably than the reading level is as far as ability to read the language. It's possibly one of the best books I've ever read. It's just one of those books that I think I will remember forever um, and always go back to, not just the fact that I'm teaching it, but... It's just so interesting. Uh, what's really interesting, it was written or it was published three years after Catcher in the Rye, which is also an incredibly impactful book in both my life and then, of course, you know, literature as a whole. I don't know what else to say about it. The, the students and I discussed themes, we discussed characters and how it's an allegory in some ways and how each of the characters represents something. I'm going to link you to the review game that you can play that was really, really fun that we found online in, um, to know those things because it was just cool and I feel like I should give those people a shout out. I kind of already knew what was going to happen to Piggy. I, d I didn't know what was going to happen to Simon and that shocked me and probably affected me more emotionally than anything else. It took me a while to get into the book because um, I was marking everything and then all of a sudden fifth chapter, I just was sucked in and I think I plowed through the rest of it probably in one sitting. So it's dark. And the, the general idea is that man is inherently bad, which a lot of people do not like that idea. We like to think that we're inherently good and that it's only um, 
an aberration that people do the horrible things that they do in society. Uh, I don't believe that. I actually believe that we are inherently uh, sinful. A Christian, that's what I believe. Golding makes the argument that um, all the things that make us good, society, government, um, social obligation of being moral and nice and stuff like that is what keeps us from going to the dark side. And I can see that as a very, very true thing. It was, it was a very, very powerful narrative. I have not watched either movie version, mostly because um, I heard the, the one that came out in the 90s like changed a lot of things and was really bad, and that the one in the 1960s is just kind of weird. So I just haven't watched a version of it, but I really found it interesting. I think it was really interesting to talk to the students about it. what happens if it had been all girls. Would that have been different if it had been mixed? why it was only up to age 12 and they didn't know and it was because Golding wanted, didn't want to deal with hormones and sex and puberty and things like that. So just all those sort of things we discussed and it was a really good book to talk about um, in understanding human nature. But like I said, it's, it's very harrowing. It just it stayed in my brain. Those images, um, especially specifically the Lord of the Flies, just for weeks and I'm surprised I didn't have nightmares. So I easily give uh, Lord of the Flies a, a 5 out of 5 for great prose, great story, great themes, great... Th I mean, it's just thought-provoking. I actually don't know of anyone who doesn't like this book. Most people are like, oh yeah, that was a good book. And it's also, don't let this fool you, a shorter novel, so it's really good for school. That's why the same reason I kind of like Gatsby. It's a good book, and it's short, unlike, you know, other novels that I have to teach. So that's all I have for Lord of the Flies. Um, I will link that review game because you should see it. It's kind of awesome. And um, I probably won't write a review about it right now. Uh, so that's it for this one. I will do some more reviews later. Okay.